let's uh, welcome in our next guest, Daljeet Kohli, Head Research, India Nivesh Securities. Daljeet, good afternoon. What is the sense that you're getting uh, in the market? Uh, do you believe that uh, we are at that level where any negative news and uh, markets would now start to see a big fall coming in? Because off late, it has been difficult for the <coughs> markets to go up as well. Good afternoon, Pankaj. I think uh, markets are uh, factoring in probably that uh, tomorrow in the Fed meeting there will not be anything. And if there is any uh, surprise hike there, probably we might see some correction setting in. Uh, of course, uh, we are ripe for correction because valuation-wise we have already stretched. Uh, but that has been the case for quite some time. We've been talking about it for a long time. Uh, but uh, because so much of liquidity is available in the world and risk on trade is just going on, uh, we could keep seeing this uh, market moving upward. So maybe I think, uh, uh, yes, tomorrow's uh, Fed rate hike might uh, initiate that um, bit of correction. Uh, but whether that correction would be very deep, it will depend upon what kind of uh, language they use. So basically just 25 basis point increase or may not have too much of impact uh, because then we, there is a gap is still very large. Um, emerging markets or anywhere else where you have the interest rates and where you don't have. So from negative, if you go to plus 0.25, that 25 may not have an impact. But the impact will be with, if they use the language which shows that this is a trend reversal. That from here onwards, this will remain like this and 25, 25, many tranches will come. Then probably markets will get spoke. So I guess um, all things uh, lie on what is uh, being spoken about or what will uh, Miss Yellen speak tomorrow in the meeting. That will probably decide on the future course. Uh, one should expect a correction, obviously, because uh, and then if it's a shallow correction, probably 100, 150 points, that will be good enough, good for the market. It will be healthy. But if it is a little bit more stretched, then probably we'll have to take a call again. <clears throat> as far as earnings are concerned, Q1s, I was just looking at the PAT number of Nifty 50 on an adjusted basis. It's just up 2-3%. That's right. Uh, that is where the valuation concern comes. No? Many times people on your channel or many other places have been talking that we are expecting 17-18% growth for next two years. Uh, my problem is that only, that for this year, the, this we, every year we start with 20% and then we end with 0 or 2 plus 2-3%. Two, this year, FI 617, there were lots of hopes that because the commodity cycle will turn around, so our Nifty 50 companies, almost half of them have international exposure. Those uh, will show a big return. Uh, even now, many analysts are still building a big recovery in second half. And that is why you don't see too much of downgrades coming in. But uh, I suspect that they will all be obliged to do that once the September numbers will come. Because as we've seen in the June quarter numbers, we have not seen any major growth probably September numbers will also end up like that. So once the half year is gone, then you will have to revise your numbers downward for the full year expectation. So I think that that will that is going to happen. And FY18, obviously, again, the numbers will have to be reduced downwards. Uh, so this hope on second half recovery to be a very big jump will probably have to tone down. Uh, I think that's what uh, our belief is. That is what we had already uh, anticipated in our note in January itself, where we had said that in FI 17, we are expecting 10 to 12 percent growth, not 17, 18, 20 percent. Uh, probably the market will come to that in the, uh, after September numbers, probably. But uh, at least are you seeing a recovery coming in? Is that something which, which can be inferred from the numbers or it's still too early? <clears throat> see, it is again stock specific, uh, certain industry specific, you will see some pockets doing well, which is always a case in a big economy, this will, in a diversified economy, this will always be the case. Uh, so to, uh, the point is that what we were uh, basing this 
expectation of uh, 18 20 percent growth was purely come on the back of two important things one that uh, private capex will come back and that uh, the therefore this cyclical and this commodity cycle will turn around so cyclicals will make a very big jump now commodity cycle has come uh, uh, turned around but to not to the extent that it was at a previous peak on the private capex we still have nothing to do there is absolutely nothing so only government capex is coming now government capex also actually in the last year was much higher than this year because that was the starting point so obviously they had all the ammunition to start playing with but second year onwards that if you see the budget itself the numbers will tell you how much was the capital planned expenditure and how much was in this year capital plan expense. So that shows that uh, this ammunition is also going a little bit down, although they are trying to make it up by various sorts, uh, increasing excise on petrol, diesel, this, that. They are trying to do all that uh, and they are continuously spending also, so which is a good thing. But uh, private capex I think is still eluding, it will take very long time. Uh, so I guess uh, the two basic presumptions which were there, they have not yet played out. So obviously the earnings uh, expectation has to be toned down. Uh, now it depends upon the market when they will actually do that. Uh, but I guess uh, the more cautious people have already started taking the note of that. Let's talk about some names. Reliance has done pretty well since uh, last time we spoke. We spoke around uh, 1,005, 1,010. It's around the 1,080 mark. Uh, do you believe it can outperform further from here on with CAPEX cycle behind free cash flow generation likely uh, from the next following year? Yes, I think our view is still remains positive and we have a buy rating uh, for last two consecutive years, calendar years. It has been uh, amongst the top 10 stocks for the year. It will. It is still there. So I, we have given a target of 1300. Now basically the uh, outperformance will come from two facts. One that the uh, expansion as well as the backward integration that they have done in their core business, petrochemicals as well as oil business, that will start showing up results some in this year, some in the next year. So market will start building that, preempting that and it will start showing up in the numbers. Uh, so that will be the one trigger point. And second trigger point, which was this uh, big overhang of telecom, how much they have invested, how they are going to play out, I think more or, uh, th those things are now getting cleared. Although some people still believe whether they will still be able to make money on that or not. Uh, in our calculations, in any case, we have not built in any positive, uh, anything to be made from telecom. But what is more important is that at least now you know how much it will be a drag. Earlier, everybody was talking as if all 2 lakh crores will go away. Now, now you know that it is not the case. It won't go away. The entire money will not go away. Uh, the drag will go, reduce over a period of time. So, and the number of subscribers, etc., what they have taken. So, all this you, one can calculate now. So, I think a lot more clarity is emerging on Reliance. And therefore, I guess uh, Reliance stock should now perform from here onwards. It is also under owned right now. So, that will also give one more trigger to play out in the stock. Uh, we remain confident. We have a buy call with a target of 1300 rupees. As far as the telecom business is concerned, the pricing that they have announced, the strategy that they have announced so far, if they actually er achieve 10 crore subscriber, it will be a good double digit ROE business? See, uh, y it ca now it depends upon what kind of ARPU they will get. Uh, some people are talking about 400 rupees ARPU. Uh, our analyst is also working on those numbers and there is, it's actually quite sensitive, sensitivity is very high. So if the number goes down then the return ratios can just change. Uh, my point is that uh, as of now Reliance is making some 15 or odd percent of ROE, you know, around that much. Uh, that uh, And because last two, three years they've been continuously investing, so ROE had taken a hit. Uh, our point is that uh, probably the investment that which has been made in the last two, three years, especially in the core business, that is going to result in a phenomenal gain. Two things, one because the uh, GRMs 
uh, where they're in uh, because of the off gas cracker plant they will have saving of almost two dollars per barrel so that will add to the kitty and that's a big big business secondly the petrochemical business where they have added the capacity almost doubled the capacity there again the because of the huge capacity expansion they will get the advantage so uh, in any case we were building in that without telecom any impact this 15 percent ro will become 17 18 percent now uh, uh, if te telecom we have not added, uh, so if we add may, whatever small amount, it will only be an incremental thing. So we are working on that part also, uh, but uh, as I said, that we are more uh, fixated with the core business, less to the telecom business. Like that, they have so many other businesses. But in the overall scheme of things, I think most, the major part will come from these two, oil and petrochemical business. Rajit, any view on Castrol? With the, the deal going through today, you're getting a 10% move on the upside. We like that stock uh, mainly because of their strong branding power and uh, therefore which gives them a high premium also in the market. Uh, but uh, the problem with Castrol has always been the uh, increase in the volume. Volume growth was always lagging because uh, it is an inherent conflict. They come out with such a good quality product that uh, the requirement for refill of the lube is uh, reducing. And with higher technology, better quality technology coming in, that requirement is going away. Uh, the good part which I liked about Castrol was that they understood this phenomena last five, seven years ago. And they started uh, developing products which were high end. So if, in, if uh, there are some synthetic variants which are quite costly. So from a normal rate of 100, 150, 200 rupees which we always think that a lube oil will cost, there are actually uh, for high-end BMWs and all, uh, the oil which is worth 1000 rupees or 1100 rupees a litre. So that kind of value addition they are doing and they have the uh, brand power so which gives them the uh, bargaining power there. They don't have to reduce their price to maintain their market share. Clear, distinct market leader in the, although Gulf is also doing very well, but still they are much ahead. So I think I view Castrol more like a FMCG company, less like any commodity or a auto ancillary company. It's more like an FMCG company. Return ratios are fantastic. Uh, it's a stock to be in your portfolio. Uh, because of this overhang in the last so many months regarding promoter selling, I think the stock was languishing. Uh, with this overhang going away, the stock has started moving. Uh, at this valuation, I'm, I'm not aware of what the valuation would be, but I guess uh, even at this price of 440, um, if my memory serves me right, it's not very uh, costly or it's not uh, too uh, steeply priced, uh, one can still have it in the portfolio. So we have a positive bias, but we don't have any coverage. Do you look at Gulf Oil as well? Because that has done pretty well in the last 12 months versus uh, Castro. Yes, they have gained market share also and they have uh, shown a very high growth in the volumes. Now that is mainly because of their positioning. Again, they have done a smart thing. Uh, they, they understood that Castrol is probably very strong in consumer facing segments. So like two wheelers, four wheelers, where customer is a decision maker or a mechanic on the roadside is a decision maker. Uh, but these are small volume products. Uh, whereas if you go into truck segment, the fleet owners are the decision maker and they are the pricing is sensitive, but the volumes are very large. I think they have uh, tracked th that segment very well and there they have got the good traction also. So they have done a commendable job as I said earlier also. Uh, we like their strategy also in the way they have moved up. Uh, but uh, if we talk of comparison of the two, uh, my personal view is that Castrol because of its branding power is ahead of Gulf. Otherwise, yes, both of them have done are doing very well. What do you uh, make of uh, Jubilant uh, Life Sciences? Now, last when we spoke to you just before the results, uh, you had a buy, and I'm sure your target price was less than 500 rupees. Uh, what is your new target price, and do you still have a buy, or you would want to change that call to a neutral as the stock has done very well? Uh, 
we have not changed the price or a uh, target price our target price was i think 495 that uh, and that has been achieved way back uh, after that we have not changed the stock price mainly because we thought that the stock has moved too uh, too sharply in a very small period purely because of the expectation that they will they are likely to get one or two approvals which are going to be big approvals now uh, there but those approvals will come somewhere in fourth quarter of this calendar year or uh, uh, next uh, first quarter of the next year so to build in those numbers as of now i think is a bit too early so therefore we have not an, an added those numbers and there hence our price has not changed uh, but we remain positive uh, on the stock we continue with the positive view because of the past performance and because of the expectations of these two three molecules which are in pipeline which uh, where they have a very high chance of success so positive view remains uh, but uh, valuation will basically it's just a it's a it will is a story of re-rating only so you have to today we are giving our target was on 8 6 to 8 times of ev to ebitda now uh, if you compare it with other well existing companies where there are no issues consistently performing they can trade at 10 to 12 times so it's now a matter of expansion of this multiple and if that happens and obviously the stock has that much more potential uh, we'll put the number probably once we get some more clarity on these uh, ex- uh, pipeline products and once the numbers start showing somewhere more then we probably will get we'll incorporate those also but we will remain positive and therefore we have not moved out of the stock we have not recommended any, any booking profit etc uh, we've just maintained a neutral view at this time Uh, so we have a hold rating probably uh, and uh, target price still remains the same did you see the news flow on orbindo pharma uh, they have completed their unit 4 fda inspection with very minor observations and in the next 12 months they don't have any major facility which is lined up for any us fda inspection should that be taken as a positive that was one of the biggest concerns for the company no i don't think that was the biggest concern but that is always an overhang on any pharma company uh, it is a positive in that manner that in a regular course of activity they will not have probably uh, any more near term fda inspection but then one should be very clear that uh, fda inspection can happen at any point of time for any company uh, for any reason so we should not rule out that they because there is because one thing is that there is no rule in fda which says that after how long will they go for an inspection it depends upon their requirement it depends upon their discretion normally we believe that if a facility has been inspected and everything goes on well then probably they don't don't, don't come back for 2 to 2 and 1/2 years for the same facility so going by that concept probably next one year will be an easy period for them in any case for us we have always liked arbindo pharma purely because of this reason that they have for last 3 4 years they have changed their uh, work cultures in such a good manner that uh, so many inspections have happened and we have not had any major fall out there so which means that the culture in the company has been built around that fact that fda inspection is a critical thing we all have to follow that and if once that culture is built in then you don't have to worry too much about when this inspection will happen it's like your day to day being you are being inspected every day if you are following the right practices right things then you don't have to worry i think that is what we have found in our window for last 3 4 years so i hope they will maintain this for next many years also if the if they maintain this continuously they will obviously get a very high rating from the market we continue to have positive view we have a buy rating with a target of 995 that continues on our end right dalji thank you so much for taking out time for us hope to see you again